show you exactly what I mean. So Lauren, I built for us some switches in a triangle, you notice, and this is very common that we would have a situation like this. The switch up on the top of the pyramid is like a core switch and the two down below are to connect users onto the network. And notice we've cabled it up so that the switch on top connects to the two bottom switches and they're connected to each other. Now, think about a broadcast packet. So a broadcast packet, we said it comes in on a port and then is sent out all the other ports. Well, in this scenario, we would have the broadcast just loop. It would just keep going. And what's really tragic about this is Lauren and I's machines right now, as we teach this class, they're sending all kinds of broadcasts. So more and more broadcasts are hitting the network and they're just being sent, you know, switch A sends it to switch B, to switch C, to switch A, to switch B, to switch C, and more and more broadcasts are hitting the network. What happens is called a broadcast storm and the network just stops working. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it only takes a couple of minutes and it will just flood it with broadcast and stop working. That was going to be my question. Like, what happens when a storm happens? Yeah, it's really bad. The mm. network is just broken. Mm. So, spanning tree protocol to the rescue. Okay, good. And the first thing that I want to say about spanning tree protocol, and I don't want you to get too carried away with this, but it does just work. So, it's on by default and it just starts doing its job without us doing anything. So if these are three Cisco switches and we connect them together like this, Lauren, we won't get a broadcast loop because spanning tree protocol is on by default and it will just do its job. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we have an episode coming up called configuring spanning tree protocol. And you might think, well, wait a minute. What's there to configure? It's on by default and it just does its job. I probably should have named that episode Tuning Spanning Tree Protocol. That probably would have been a more appropriate name. Too late for me to change it. Sorry, folks. But that's kind of really what we're doing. We're tuning it. And I'll explain, you know, why as we get deeper into this discussion. So, okay. We see this problem right here, this broadcast storm. How does spanning tree protocol fix this? Well, what it does is it starts out when the switches power on, it looks around and it says, all right, I'm going to elect a root bridge. There has to be a king of the hill switch. A bridge is another word for switch. And I won't get into the long story why. Just trust me that bridge and switch are interchangeable terms here. So it elects the king of the hill, the root bridge. And it makes every single port on this root bridge what we call a designated port. Now, a designated port means that port will be forwarding traffic. So on the root bridge, makes sense, the king of the hill every single one of its ports are going to be forwarding traffic. Then what it does is it goes to each non-root bridge and it elects a root port. This is the port that has the best, fastest connectivity back to the root bridge. So you can see Spanning Tree does its magic here in my illustration. And on each of those non-root bridges, it elects a root port. Those are also forwarding. Now, there's a rule that Spanning Tree Protocol has that says you need to have at least one designated port on every segment. So Spanning Tree Protocol looks at your topology. It looks at that bottom link and it realizes I need a designated port down there. So it makes one of those two ports designated. And notice what happens, Lauren. We have Every single port, every single connection has a role. So Spanning Tree Protocol says at the end, well, anyone left over, you are going to be the non-designated port and you will not forward traffic. 
So what's happening with spanning tree protocol? Well, as you can see from the illustration, one of our links is not going to be forwarding any traffic. That's great. It's it's creating a barrier just in case. That's exactly right. It's creating that barrier. And what's wild about this is we don't, like all of this took place without us doing anything. And what really can, you know, like you see students just, they're like, really? Are you serious? Those two switches down at the bottom of this illustration are not sending traffic back and forth to each other over that link. And the answer is no, they are not. And what's interesting about that is if you go up to them physically, the little LED light will be on. It's not like the ports are shut down or anything. The ports are still on. They are just not forwarding traffic. Why are the ports still on? Well, guess what else spanning tree protocol will do for us, Lauren? What, what does it do? Thank goodness. See the link on the left between the root bridge and that designated port over on the left, you know, the two switches on the left of this illustration. Mm -hmm. Let's say their link fails. Someone takes some scissors and cuts that link in half. Now, Spanning Tree will recognize that and it will dynamically bring alive the link that it had put in blocking mode. Oh, so this is like a safety net just in case or like, a, a, what is it, like the B string on the football team? Like, yeah. no, we're not sitting in yet. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get your football analogy, wow. which scares me because I'm the sports fan of the two of us. I'm trying to speak football and tech. <laughs> anyway, back to you. <laughs> I love it. So, Lauren, yeah, here's the deal. Spanning Tree just doesn't give us this loop-free topology and stop. It's going to continue to work for us. It watches the topology. And if one of those other links were to fail, it will go, wow, we need that bottom link now. Yeah. So thank goodness it does that, right? If it didn't work that way, we couldn't really use it. I mean, it would be a very, very punishing protocol because it's blocking links and then we have other links fail. So the connectivity would be even worse. All right, so, boy, oh, boy, spanning tree protocol, one of my favorite things to teach, and that is because I like a challenge. And, you know, this is some of the more difficult material that we've had to cover yet, but I think once you break it down, it's going to be quite simple for you. So one of the key aspects of this, as we saw, is different ports have different roles, you know, and... Those roles are describing for us whether or not the port is actually forwarding traffic. The first type of port is that root port. Remember, this is on your non-root switches, and it's the best way to get back to the root bridge, and it is a forwarding port. We saw that there are designated ports. Remember the rule I said, spanning tree protocol wants to elect one of those for every link. The other interesting thing that we saw about the designated port is that every single port on the root bridge is a designated port. And finally, we saw that there is a poor port that gets left out. It's the non-designated port, and it is going to be the port that is blocking traffic. Something else that we saw in this illustration is that some ports block, some ports forward, but I actually simplified that a little bit, so let's elaborate on that. There are five port states that you should be aware of with spanning tree protocol. Notice the first one is disabled. Yikes. You can go and turn off spanning tree protocol. This is not recommended. I repeat, not recommended because you know, Lauren, you can only imagine if you go to these two switches we show in the illustration and you turn off spanning tree protocol, now within seconds, you're going to have a switching loop and the little network here is going to crash. But disabled is an option. Okay, blocking and forwarding, those are easy. We've already thought about those. So what's with listening and learning? 
Well, it turns out, think about how this works. We go over and we power on these two switches in my example in this slide. We turn these two switches on. They're not, it would be dangerous for them to go from a blocking state right to a forwarding state because spanning tree needs time to do its thing. So when a port is going from blocking to forwarding or from forwarding to blocking, it goes through two intermediate states. The first is listening. So the port's like, hey, I'm about to forward traffic. Let me listen to the spanning tree protocol messages to see if it's safe for me to go forwarding. And then after seconds worth of that, it goes into a learning state where it's starting to learn MAC addresses of devices and it's about to go full-blown forwarding. So there's two intermediary states there, listening and learning that we have in spanning tree protocol. We're gonna be talking more about all of these concepts so don't worry. And also, Lauren and I like to remind you at times like this, remember, you can always watch this video twice. And one more reminder, I've built study notes for you that accompany this episode. So those are gonna help as well as the links in there. If you're a person like me, a lot of people say, Anthony, how do you like to learn video or reading? And my answer these days is always, both. If it's an option, I want to watch videos and I want to read to make sure I have mastery. So we've assembled all the tools that you need. This is a fantastic episode. And for someone maybe like you at home who might be studying for something, you can always make flashcards, uh, test your knowledge. And we've got more to cover. I hear there's an episode coming up where you are tuning STP. Yes, we'll be doing that in an episode in the very next episode, we're going to do something neat. We're actually going to look at some versions of